Ao salam tana ena yis elin ene rasi adinos tefari ne. This is um, the eve of the Shabbat, Shabbat Eve. So we'll say Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Hopefully by the time one gets to see this, either they will have begun the Shabbat. Um, and this particular Shabbat is very, uh, it's very important. So let's, uh, let's touch on something here. Mm-hmm. All right, let's touch on the Shabbatical teaching, the Orita Minbab. Now, the Orita Minbab for this particular Shabbat begins off the 44th. So we already went through, like, well, the 43rd was very interesting. The 43rd was very interesting and very important. The 43rd Arastafari Sabbatical um, studies or the Sabbath teaching, actually that was Mate, 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 which is also known as Guzo. Mate is the Ebraista Kwankwa in the Hebrew, and Guzo is Bamarinya, Guzo. And that Torah reading from um, Numbers, it was from Numbers uh, 43, Numbers, it was the 43rd Sabbatical reading, and it was Numbers 33. And it completed, um, it completed the the minbab, the nibab for the book of Numbers. So we're through the, with the book of Numbers right now. We're about to begin in the book of um, Deuteronomy, or what's called uh, Devarim. The Ashkenazi pronounce it Devarim because of the pointing, uh, the nuka and the nekut, the, the pointing of the the dots, the, their own pronunciation, which is called by linguists who are informed, is called Fourth Hebrew, the Hebrew that's commonly spoken and thought to be um, biblical Hebrew or, quote, Hebrew, not the Hebrew of the Polish and German Jews, which is mixed with their own ethnic background. So they bring in the Yiddish. But when they now um, try to speak the Hebrew and go through their uh, Hebrew um, pronunciation, it changes the, the, the pronunciation from the original Hebrew, which was much like the original Ge'ez. In fact, the, the Ge'ez, the older Ge'ez, the archaic Ge'ez is the root. So anyway, they say Devarim, we say Debarim, Debarim. And we'll go to the, the whiteboard. Um, hopefully shortly as we get into some of the details vis-a-vis -vis related to this. But Bamarinya, the 44th, which is the um, Arba Arat, the Arba Arat Orita Nebab, is called Yenegaracho Kal Yihno. Yenegaracho Kal Yihno. And it means, it's translated often, these are the words. So when you're looking at, let's bring this up right here. Um, when you're looking at the, the uh, here we go right here. When you're looking at the King James, if you compare it side by side, the King James, let's go to chapter one of um, Debarim or Orit Zedagim. Bamarinya, we say Orit Zedagim. So, the book of Deuteronomy is called Zedagim. And the first verse is Besama'a Wudaman Feskadusa Hadu Amlak. It reads Be Yordanos Mado Be Nidrebeda Be Areba Wist Be Etara Bahera Fitle Fit Be Faran Be Tofelim Be Labanim Be Heterotim Be Diza Habim Mekakela Salu Muse le Israel Hulu Yenegracho Kal Yihno. These be the words. Now King James translates it like this These be the words which Muse Moses spake to all Israel on this side, Jordan, in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea, between Paran or, or Faran, between 
Paran and Tophel and Laban and Hazeroth and Dezahab. And now the next the next uh the next verse the next verse uh who let it reads thus Be Seyer Terara Menged Ka Korebiska Kades Bernea de Res Ya Asra Ank and Mengedno. There are eleven days journey from Horeb or Koreb by the way of Mount Seir to the Kades Barnea. Now what is important what is important here, let's get an overview of uh the Barim or the Devarim uh, Parasha because it's important for us to get an overview of this particular Parasha here, which is the first of the readings. Now the word Debarim or Devarim it means words. It means words or as we would say a negar bamarinya. Um not just the, the, the individual words but matters, you know, things. You know, things matters like like these are the words. This is almost like what's happening. This is you know, like when you're saying what's up, well, do you know what things are going on? And you talk about different things. And it's the second word and it's the first thing the word in the Kufa, the Kufale or the Parsha. And it's the forty fourth weekly or read or Torah portion in the annual Hebraic and the Orthodox Jewish cycle of the Orit Minbab or the Torah readings and the first in the Orit Zedagim or the book of Deuteronomy which in the Hebrew is called Devarim or Debarim. Now it constitutes Deuteronomy chapter 1 verses 1 to Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 22. Now Hebrews and Orthodox Jews within the diaspora, they generally read it in July or August. And it always it's always said to be read on the the, the Shabbat Hazon, which is the, the Sabbath that immediately goes before the Tisha Ba'av, the Tisha Ba'av, which is the um memorial um for the destruction of Jerusalem, the the first and the second and other significant events also coincide. So when when Israel's temple, holy temple in Jerusalem was destroyed around five eighties in the five eighty, some say five eighty six, some may say five eighty nine, there's some debate about the actual which day it was destroyed in or, or what's the dating of it based on a lot of archaeological facts. But this Tisha B'Av is the memorial for that, and we hope to touch on that as well. Now, the summary, the summary now of the 44th um, Torah portion, the summary goes as follows, is that it was in the 40th year, so now we come to the 40th year, the 40th year after the Exodus from Egypt that Musa, Moses, he addressed the Beta Israel on the east side of the Jordanos winds or the, the Jordan River, recounting the instructions, going over the instructions that Ha Elohim Baruchu, that the true God had given them. And we find this in Deuteronomy chapter one, verses one to verse three. Now, when the Beta Israel were at Kore and Mount Sinai, Mount Sinai Ha Elohim had told them that they had stayed long enough at that mountain, that they that they were just dwelling there. But the Almighty had to tell them that you you you've stayed here far too long. One has to resume the guzo, resume the mate, resume, uh, 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 resume the journey. The um excuse me the mase, the mase mate mato which was the forty um mato which was the forty second. And the 43rd, you might see on page 6 of this particular document right here, on page on page 6 of this particular document right here, if you go to page 6, roughly right around, right around, right around here, right? If you go here, 
you will see that it's uh, my tote and it's my say, right? And there's an asterisk there, right? Now, the asterisk, the asterisk, if you look at, if you go to page 7, you will see that the portions that are marked with the asterisk can be added to the following week's portion. So there's a doubling up. Depends on whether it's a, it's a regular year or whether it's a leap year. There's a doubling up. So these two actually go together, Matot and Mase, which Bamarinya in the Amharic is um, Negadoch and Guzo, or the tribes and the journey, the tribes and the journey. And in this particular uh, um, dispensation, this particular dispensation that we're living in is interesting because we've been touching on tribes. As a one of the recent videos we posted on Ethiopian World Net, we touched on tribes. Um, chiefly, uh, Ishmael, the progenitor of the of the Arab or the Harab. And what's interesting about this particular um, Torah portion, if you look at this particular Torah portion, what you find in the very first. Uh, the very first uh, is the very first verse. It says, "Be Jordanos, be Jordanos, mado be midra be da, be Arabba wist be etra ba herfit lefit." Is speaking about this side of the Jordan River, this side of the Jordan River in the wilderness, in the wilderness. It says, "In the plain over against the Red Sea, be." Araba, the Araba, Bamarinya in the Met of Kedus of Negus Neges, it has the Araba. So that's speaking about the, the, the Arab lands, the Arab lands, or the Araba, what was known as the Araba in the time of Musa, it says the Etara Bahir, you understand, before the Red Sea, feet le feet, face to face with the Red Sea, feet le feet, across from the Red Sea. Now, if we think about this for a moment and we say, well, where were the Israelites in, in geographical location? Because clearly we see Etara. We know that Etara is really, the, in truth, the northern province of the ancient Ethiopian and Davidic kingdom. You understand? It's the ancient northernmost province. But due to um, Mohammedanism, the Ottoman Turks, and a lot of history and what has occurred in that history, that part is still in dispute. The whole um, separation between Eritrea and Ethiopia, what's at the root of it, is actually contained in the Torah and contained in the Scriptures. So if one wants to get to overstand these things and have a good standing in it, one needs to know what the history of it is. But what's interesting about this particular season that we're in and some of the topics, the major topics that are like, in the news and things that are happening in this so-called world system, we see tribes, we see our promised land, we see the Horn of Africa, we see our actual, spiritually, we see an actual um, um, superimposition, in the sense, of the territory that we're going through in the scriptures. And if you're studying the scriptures like we're studying and praying for overstanding of this, and your understanding is being opened up, you begin to see the connection between the Torah teachings and the lessons and week to week and what's happening in our so-called global um, atmosphere. Things are beginning to line up. So last Sabbath was actually the Son of Man's Earth Day. Now, the Son of Man's Earth Day, is, is, there's an interesting connection with uh, Lich Teferi's Earth Day. And that being a Sabbath day, we touched on the King Sabbath, and we also touched on the fact that it's a jubilee. It's a jubilee or an eobelu. It's an eobelu of the Metahaf Kedus. Now, the Metahaf Kedus is the book of the seven seals, is the Bible of the King of Kings, of Haile Selassie I. Now, why is, this, why is this important? Well, this is important in many in many um, respects, but chiefly when we're speaking about this particular, this particular Bible here, we're speaking about the Metaf Kedus. We're speaking about the Metaf Kedus right here, which is the Bible of His Imperial Majesty that was proclaimed and published July 23rd, 
1961. So if we count from July 23rd, 1961 to this present time, we have July 23rd, 2011, that's a 50 year period of time. So when we say it's a jubilee or a yobelu, it's vis a vis the Metaf Kedus, the Bible of His Imperial Majesty, was known prophetically according to Revelation as the Book of the Seven Seals, Revelation, chiefly Revelation 5 5. So this also further helps us to identify not only the time, the Zemin, and the Adis Zemin that His Imperial Majesty has, has ushered in, this new age. New age already began from 1930. You understand? Know, Even a little before that time, but especially with the publication of the Gazet uh, or the new the newspaper of the emperor, since he brought the first printing presses in as well. This is very important to co to connect with the what is written about um, to 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 loose. You understand? Know, and to unseal. You understand? Know, to loose the ancient the ancient meanings in the language which the young and the old could understand. And to unseal it, the, the, the seals of it, the word seal, Bamarinya, also means to print or to stamp. So on the Met of Kedus, the original, there are seven letters, and those seven letters stand for the Met of Kedus. Now, this is all important with the, the, the Torah studies and the Torah portion. This is why sometimes we ourselves may, may be studying for sometimes 12 hours a day even, you know, just, just straight through the day. You know, I mean, with little breaks here and there, coffee breaks, Aishin's breaks, food breaks, sometimes reasoning with ones and ones, taking care of whatever necessary business that we can. Um, however, sometimes you really have to, you really have to devote yourself to, to, to tabernacle um, study. When we say tabernacle, the tabernacle is more than just a building. You understand? It's it's a way of life. You understand? It's it's more than just a religion. You understand? It's it's a spirituality. But we have to be informed, as Christ says, you do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. If we want to walk and have victorious lives in the power of God, we need to learn the scriptures. We need to learn His already revealed Word, and this is what we devote ourselves to in the line of Jewish society of the Imperial Majesty and in the, the, the ministry of the good news of the King of Kings and his Christ, Christ in his kingly character. Now, the sabbatical time, the, the remembrance of the Sabbath, even just that, that initial idea, perhaps you're not at this point where even on the Sabbath day you really be giving yourself to, to reading and studying and, and growing that way, but even to begin with the remembrance to recognize what time it is and coming out of, of Babylon, coming out of the spiritual Egypt of the world, the, the warfare, the six-day-a-week warfare, and, and giving, giving your complete uh, um, love, you understand, to, because to love God is to obey, to love Ha Elohim is to obey Him. You understand? Know obey and love. Not love and obey, but obedience. It's, it's very, very important because we're, we're obedient to the world system, this world system. You understand? Until we become born again. And then we begin to recognize the madness that we have been in. And what we've also been missing out on is, is just not just life, but life more abundantly as the Moshiach, as the Moshiach, Yehoshua, Yeshua, HaMoshiach. Has, 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 has spoken as Jesus Christ, Jesus Christus has spoken. Now, the connection with now the last um, Sabbath, with the King's Sabbath, as well as with the, the Jubilee of the publication of the Metaf Kedus, the Emperor's Amharic Bible, the authorized 1961 Amharic Bible known as the Metaf Kedus and the revised Amharic Bible that we, as an acronym, call it the RAB or the Arab, the Arab, because we don't have rabbis in that sense. The word Arab in that sense is not from Hebrew but from Babylon because the word Arab means great. It was a title in Babylon. So the Jews that went to Babylon, they brought 
this idea back in many of the converted people. And this is where we get this idea even to this day, but Christ has brought it up to a new level that he is our he is our teacher. He is the primary teacher. So even in what we're doing is is sharing, is ministering, it's it's teaching, but teaching in His Spirit. You know, saying teaching in Him and recognizing that he, uh, that He is the primary teacher. So the Word and the Spirit, His Spirit guiding us in our understanding, is the primary teacher. So the revelation that has been revealed to us, in addition to being the King Sabbath, the last. Sabbatical um, period that we just passed through, July 23rd, it was also the Jubilee. But now, what's important about the teachings contained therein is the fact that the 42nd and the 43rd go together. The 42nd and the 43rd go together. And there's an interesting teaching I would like to share on um, the connectivity between the 43rd and the 42nd, or between Negadoch and Guzo, or Matot and Mase, which is 42 and 43. And let's see if we can um, bring this up for a moment. And um, I think it's right around here. Let's see. Because now Matot means tribes. Matot means tribes. Bamarinya means negadoch. Now, when we go to Numbers, take notes of this, because when you go to Numbers uh, 34 and 2, concerning this connectivity and this, um, and this uh, linkage here in the scripture between these uh, two uh, portions, because um, Mase was the 23rd, that was Guzo, that was the closing portion of the book of Numbers. And that concludes the story of the desert generation, a 40-year generation, whom almost all of them had, had, had perished um, because, of, uh, because of disobedience um, and, and, lack of, and lack of faith. Faith means doing what Yahweh has requested of us. And... and from doing, we learn whose teaching and whose word is it. Is it really of man or is it of the Almighty? You can't just look outside this way of life and not walk it and then know it. Um, they say he who feels it, he who has a, a, a tesem to, tesemma, tesemma, he who feels it, knows it, he can semma, simma, shemma, shemma, he who can hear it, can know it. Because he who hears it and feels it moves in it, and, and, and they get to experience it. And it's something that we have to encourage ones and ones, because a lot of folks that try to just, like, watch from the outside or listen and, and, and do little um, lower intellectual exercises and don't really submit themselves, you understand, to doing the will. In other words, they might... Um, be a mental ascent. They may remember the Sabbath, but they're not keeping it set apart. In other words, if they're working all the six days of the week, then they need that day. Even if you just look at it on the physical level, which is the lower, the, the the lowest level, is the physical level. The highest level is the spiritual level, and then the middle level is the psychological level. A lot, of, a, many, many folks are still trapped on that physical level. So the mental ascent is necessary to remember the Sabbath. And in remembering and learning of the importance of it, you know what I'm saying, comes the, the, the willingness to, to, to make our wills obedient, to make our wills obedient, you know what I'm saying? So we move beyond just, just the instinctual, physical, lower psychological level, and we now get into the spiritual level. And through that spiritual level, um, there's a rewiring of our way of thinking, um, of our way of perceiving, of our of our way of perception, it's it's actually it's a new birth. The best way to describe it is as a as a new birth. This is what the Mashiach spoke of, even for Nicodemus, when he spoke about this um, new birth. And this is what the Mashiach spoke to the Samaritan woman about when he said to the Samaritan woman that ye worship that which ye know not. We know what we worship. For salvation is of Yehuda, of the Ayus or the Ayhud. Salvation is of 
the Judahites, or nowadays it would be said and understood as the Jews. And there is a very important truth to that. But you have some Jews or Hebrews, black and, and, and white and European, as well as Christians, some black and, and, and white and, and European, who either are doing Jewish things without receiving the Moshiach, Yes, so Yeshua, for for racist reasons that they, they try to speculate and make religious, you understand, um, or theological reasons, and then you have um, Christians likewise who who cut off the the Old Testament, the foundation. So you have those Jews that refuse to accept the the Berit Hadasha, the the New Covenant, and you have Christians who refuse to accept the foundation. So we cannot be like like any of them. This is why the King of Kings. This is why the Beta Israel and the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian example of Kedemawi Halas Elasi is so important um, to us because it brings both um, both families together. You understand? It brings it brings the Judeo portion with the Messianic portion together in in, in oneness. And this is the will of God manifest. That's why it says that Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands unto God. That, that was a prophetic prophecy of David that was fulfilled, not just with the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon, their only son. That, that's significant. That's a very significant fact and truth. Yet, even before that and even after that and even in this present time, there is a continuous testimony. We as Rastafari are the testimony to that reality coming out of nowhere, out of slavery, and we're making this identification and bringing forth facts and evidence that proves this. Whether ones want to accept it or not, you know, that's their choice, that's their decision. You understand? But if they want to deny it, then bring forth your proof, not just your feelings and opinions, but bring forth your evidence, you understand, to, to, to rebut or rebuke or, or, or do whatever you want to want to do. Otherwise, keep silent and recognize that it's truth. So we're going to touch on the second portion. In, an, in, an, in the next portion, we're going to go a little bit more into detail and probably um, um, get a couple more tools and learning aids in order to bring it, bring it forward. But what we want to touch on next is my say, Matot and Masse, how Masse and Matot actually um, comes together. And um, I think we need to go into a little more, more detail on this and even see the connection with the Ethiopian World Federation and with this diaspora right now in this present time. And those who are conscious or becoming more conscious of, of, of the, the reality of us being Ethiopian Hebrews, black so-called Jews or Judahites, you understand? But within that Ethiopian, Ethiopia is a very important part of that connection. And pray for those those black Hebrews and Israelites who who, who deny the Ethiopian connection. Um, there's 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 reasons why you know we can understand why some of them deny the Ethiopia connection. But it's just like a refusal to go any deeper and to get the facts. It's just accepting something for some reason that's other than truth. And and we, we really can't, you know, we can't deal with that. But we do pray for those brothers. There's a very important teaching that connects with tribes and the journey. Tribes and the journey. There's a reason for the diversity of us as um Black Hebrews, Ethiopian Hebrews, uh, there, there's a very important, even as, as African Americans, West Indians, Jamaicans, um, Haitians, um, um, Black Hispanic, uh, Ethiopians, and Africans from different parts who are all Hebrew in their identity. It, it's very, very important. And and Masse and Guzo, Mas, Masse and Guzo, or or um, uh, um, I mean, Guzo and, and Negadoch or, or Matot and Mase, from the Hebrew, from the Amharic to the Hebrew, Hebrew to the Amharic, we have to become familiar with these languages. This is part of the, the, the gift of, of tongues. 
not of foaming on the mouth or speaking in some unintelligible dialect, but no, speaking in these ancient tongues because the, 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 the keys, you understand, the keys that unlock not just our understanding, but also uh, it unlocks many closed doors. Um, more to come. Stay tuned, all right? Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam.